so in this tutorial, I'd like to share some tips about using layers in GIMP and some layer attributes to help you organize them. So let's jump back into GIMP here and let's go ahead and open any image since it's only for reference. All right, so in the previous tutorial, I mentioned a couple things you can do to lock the layer to prevent you from accidentally moving it or altering the layer itself by adjusting or altering the pixels of that layer. So to prevent your image layer from being moved, you can add this move lock and then you won't be able to move that layer. And then this one here will lock the pixels so you can't accidentally alter those pixels. And then this last lock option here is to lock the alpha channel. So the alpha channel is the transparency of a layer. So if you have transparency in that layer, let's say a logo, then you can lock that transparency from being altered. Now, in addition to locking with these three options, you can also lock two layers together or link them together. So if you come down here and click on this icon, that will duplicate the layer. Then if you click to the right of this eye icon, it will add a link icon. And then you will need to add another layer to link to. Now, when you grab your move tool and move that layer, it's going to move both layers at the same time. If you only have one linked, then it's not really linking to anything. So you're only going to move that one layer that has that link icon or without it actually. And you can actually link two or multiple layers together if that's something you need to do for your particular project that you're working on. All right, so let's quickly review some of these options down here at the bottom of the layers panel so you have an idea of the things that you can do with these attributes. And then we're gonna cover some of these in more detail later in the class. So this first option here, pretty self-explanatory, it's going to delete a layer. And of course, this will duplicate. This little clown icon will allow you to add a layer mask and there's multiple types to choose from. And we'll go into great detail about these in the pro editing section. So we're going to go ahead and cancel out of that for now. And then this icon here will allow you to merge the layer that is selected with the layers below it, or at least the ones that are visible. If they're not visible, then you won't be able to merge them together. So once I click here, it's going to merge those two layers together. Now, if you want to change the stacking order of your layers, you can click and drag down or up, or you can use these little arrows right here. Now, this option here will create a grouped layer for you, but currently it doesn't have anything inside of it. So to add a layer or layers into it, you're going to click and drag that layer over the image preview here until you see those dotted lines. Once you see that, release your mouse and it will automatically be added. And you can see it's added because it's indented compared to the top layer here. And then the layer group will inherit the image preview of the layer that is at the top. To add another layer, you're going to click and drag up until you see that horizontal line. You can do it either at the top of that layer or below it. And then you can add another layer inside of here as well. To remove the layers, you're going to click and drag down and then it's going to remove it. And if I close this, you'll see that this layer is no longer in this grouped layer here. Now to create a new layer, you're going to click right here and you have some different attributes inside of here that you can apply while creating your new layer. So you can give it a name here. You can add a color tag based on how you want to organize your layers, maybe a specific color will be applied to all layer masks and then maybe another color for grouped layers, so on and so forth. And if you want to apply a blending mode at the time of creation, you can do that from here. These options are more advanced. I never really use them myself. You can apply an opacity setting for that layer as well. You can set the size and the position with these options here. And then this option down here, you'll probably use more often because you're either going to want to fill in that new layer with transparency or a solid color, whether it's your foreground or background color swatch that you had set up prior to activating the new layer window. Now, you also have some options over here to make that layer visible or hidden. It's visible by default. 
and then you can set it up to be linked locked with these three options here as well and then once you click ok it will create that new layer accordingly now if you want to change the color tab or make other attribute changes you can right click on the layer and select your color tag from here and make some other changes to that layer from here as well and then there's other options down here and we'll cover some of these later on as you progress through the class all right so the last thing we're going to cover real quick is the layer boundary what is it and what's its purpose so i have my new layer selected and on the outside here you're going to see the yellow and black dashed line that's the layer boundary now if you select a layer group it's going to change to blue and black so that's just an easy way to determine whether or not you have a group layer selected or an individual layer now the purpose of the layer boundary is to show the size of the layer and to confine your edits or altering of the pixels of that layer within the layer boundary because you can't paint on the outside of this layer because the size of this layer is right here so everything you do is confined to that layer boundary inside of it now if you crop your canvas and you didn't crop the pixels or delete those pixels permanently then the layer boundary is going to show outside of that canvas and that's your cue that you have additional pixels outside of that layer or outside of that canvas I should say and then you can readjust the layer accordingly if you need to recompose the image now sometimes I find the layer boundary to be a little distracting so I like to turn that off and we did that previously by going up to view and clicking on show layer boundary now every time I click on a new layer it will not show that layer boundary if you want to reshow it just come back up here and click on show layer boundary all right so one type of layer we haven't covered yet is adjustment layers and if you have experience with Photoshop then you probably know what they are if not that's okay because you're going to learn all about them in the next tutorial.